Hey you guys, it's Brit tonight. We're here to talk about a few different things that I've come across over the last day or so on social media. I want to talk about Nika Diwa. She had a video that I would normally completely agree with, but when you know who she is and what she does on social media, it makes her just look like a big old hypocrite. So I wanted to react to that with y'all. And then I also want to cover Colleen Ballinger talking about herself and just how sad and lonely and whatever she has been over the, um, you know, recent months specifically. She talks about dreams and then she goes into sharing about her kids going to school and I had a bunch of thoughts on that. And then I also want to cover Brittany Dawn playing dress up with her husband among everything else that she has created and um, more specifically damaged she wants to play dress up alongside her husband and put out very dangerous messages to the um, people whom are consuming her content. I had quite a few thoughts on that too. So either way, timestamps will be down below, but if you're interested, please keep watching. All right, you guys, so Nika Diwa, I've covered her in previous videos. I will link that down below. Um, but she is somebody who uses her kids for content. Surprise, surprise. That is a common theme on my channel, as most of y'all know. But she has, uh, I think, 3 million followers on TikTok. Very well-known, very, um, I don't even want to say, like, very well-liked, because I think a lot of people just don't like what she does but they're watching because that's just kind of what some of us do is like we disagree with content but we're still keeping an eye on it and i think that that is a percentage of her audience but nevertheless three days ago she posted this is especially hard for people pleaser parents with a laughing emoji hashtag parenting so let's listen to what she had to say and then I will tell y'all in more detail why she is a massive hypocrite and why this video just makes her look like she is basically like selling snake oil. Like don't come on here and act like you care about your kids and what they're consuming when you make the kind of content that you make. But I will allow her to speak and then I'll give my thoughts. This is a reminder that you're not supposed to be your child's best friend. You're supposed to be their parent. My daughter right now is not allowed to watch YouTube because there's a lot of questionable things that are not age appropriate on there for her. So she was getting really upset and just saying like, that's not kind mommy, that's not fair because for her, she has limited understanding because she's a child, but I'm the grown up. It is not my responsibility to explain all the intricacies of the decisions that I make to protect her. Um, and she may get mad and she right now doesn't understand one day, maybe she will, but our job is not to make our kids like us. Our job is to protect them and to love them. If I knew nothing about her and who she is or the content that she has made, I would stand on this video and say, bravo to her. I am here for her, not, um, exposing her kids or her, you know, child, uh, child or children to, the things that are on YouTube, because as we know, there are a lot of really questionable and problematic things that happen on social media and kids should not be consuming this content. I've covered that previously. However, this is also the same woman who literally put her child on a changing table. She was talking about boundaries in certain areas on that child's body that are off limits for um, strangers and certain people in the family and all of this kind of stuff. And she filmed it and she posted it. Like you are not going to be the spokesperson for people who are keeping their children safe. You are not elected to that position. You are not allowed to make content like this and be praised for it because you are a family vlogger. So don't sit here and try to tell me that you're shielding your children from the dangers of social media and you're shielding them from all of the problematic content that is all over YouTube while you are exploiting them while you make money off of them. You are not allowed to make that content without 
the backlash. And if I'm the only person that's going to give the backlash, so be it. I am here for it all day and all night. But I found this to be so hypocritical and so just how dare you? You're, you you want to protect her from stuff on YouTube, but you won't give her privacy and dignity and respect until she is old enough to give you proper informed consent that she is willing to participate in your social media circus. You're a hypocrite. And I also found it very interesting when I was looking at some of her other recent videos that she is actually online besties that is her label, not mine, with Queen City Trends, who remember the one eating caviar with tart in a private jet and, you know, wanting to come back and respond to backlash while she's talking about how inclusive tart is and how the influencers were all getting along and being supportive. That woman, um, yeah, these two are quote online besties. How interesting, how interesting that two people whom have uh, zero reality, zero morale, zero um, care about their children's privacy are online besties. Go figure, you know? Um, so Nika is um, another hypocrite. Add her to the bucket of hypocrites. I've discussed many during my time on YouTube. The one thing in this comment section that I will completely agree with is a lot of people are saying I agree with this except I do think explaining the details or even just a light go over as to why this decision is what it is is super important. I don't let my daughter watch YouTube unless Miss Rachel is on and I am in the room. You can be a parent and a friend. You could just explain why she deserves a why. If if you're mad, just explain it, then she will understand and not get mad. So a lot of people are giving her proper backlash, but I'm looking at this from the sheer hypocrisy POV. And I think that she is um, a, a total hypocrite for putting this video out. But I want to know, how do y'all feel about this? And how do you feel about it specifically knowing what kind of content she has produced and is still producing current day? She literally is relevant because she posts her children on social media. I want to talk about our favorite um, YouTube failure and weirdo, Colleen Ballinger, for just a quick second. She put out a video talking about her kids going to school. And before I touch on that, I want to touch on how she went into detail about this vivid dream that she had recently in a previous video. And then somebody gave her a little bit of insight as to why that dream might have happened. And she went on to talk about her anxiety, her depression, how she feels like she has failed herself. She's let herself down, so on and so forth. Ago, I talked about this really intense dream that I had. It was really bizarre, very detailed, very intense. And I told the whole story of it. And I got a couple comments on it that kind of like blew my mind. Hey, Colleen, love you so much. Been a follower for like over 10 years. Wanted to tell you, I've always been interested in the meaning of dreams. I've always been a very vivid dreamer. So have I, like always. My parents always said that I would be the next Stephen King. He was like that. Anyway, dreaming of seeing someone's vomit. This dream symbolizes the need to release negative emotions or thoughts. It may also indicate a need to let go of something that is causing discomfort or distress. It can also represent a fearing, fear of losing control or being overwhelmed by emotions. Lisa, when I read that comment, I wept. <laughs> I mean, at this point, it's not surprising when I cry because I cry constantly, but it's so wild that you said that because that day that I had that dream and that vlog in particular and the vlog before it, my depression had kind of started to like come back and um, I was feeling unmotivated and just like a failure and just horrible about myself and beating myself up a lot. And I could really feel my depression and anxiety just kind of like choking me kind of. And there were so many times where I started talking about it to the camera and then I'd be like, no, don't do that. Just stop. Like, just don't be negative and just only put in like positive, like happier stuff. Like don't talk about that kind of stuff. The fact that you said dreaming of seeing someone's vomit, this dream symbolizes the need to release negative emotions or thoughts. <laughs> it also indicates needing to let go of something that's causing discomfort or distress and it can also represent a fear of losing control or being overwhelmed by emotions. Like everything you said was exactly what I was going through that day when I read that. I was like, oh my god. But I, I'm the same way. Like I love like diving into dreams and what they mean and what they could mean. You know, who knows if any of it's true or not, but it always rings pretty true for me. I don't know much about dreams and the meaning of dreams, but I've always been a very, very intense, vivid dreamer. When I'm pregnant, my dreams are horrifying. I mean, the, the, imagine the worst case scenarios you can possibly imagine. And I dream about them every night and they are vivid and they feel real. Like people say that in dreams, you can't be unalived. Uh, you cannot feel pain like I, was, like, I, I could like I could when I was pregnant and I had dreams I could feel pain I could be like brutally harmed and I felt it it was 
oh, like, I'd wake up sweating, sobbing, screaming, like, oh my god. So even when I was pregnant, well, I was in so much pain when I was pregnant, but even when I was sleeping, I couldn't escape, like, being miserable. <laughs> it was horrible. But only, I feel like it was only my first trimester of my pregnancies where my dreams were, like, horrendous. But my whole life I've been a vivid dreamer. I still remember dreams from when I was a little, little girl that I would have, like, recurring dreams, scary dreams, vivid dreams. Like, always, I remember them from a little girl. Whenever I'm super, super stressed, super anxious, have extreme emotions, like, my dreams are wild. And so I thought that was just a quirky, silly, funny dream that I was sharing, but apparently it was saying a lot more than I thought it was. Anyway. If this was coming from some other people, I would say that really sucks because anxiety, depression, ADHD, any um, anything that has to do with like your well-being, your emotional well-being, your mental health. I'm always somebody who tries to understand that and not from like a clinical perspective, but just as a being a human being, understanding that life is really tough. And a lot of the stuff that we go through, whether or not we share it aloud, is really painful and it can be hurtful and it might be good and we should choose to not share it. Um, so typically I would feel some sorrow for her, but seeing how she orchestrated and enabled and directed so much hate against people who, who she deemed enemies or no longer her friends or people that are no longer in her corner. She sat there and participated in this behind the scenes, uh, her brigade of stands attacking people like Joshua D TV and Adam McIntyre and other people who, um, you know, whether or not I fully agree with them, Trisha Paytas has always been somebody who I had problems with and I never fully agreed with what Trisha was doing online, but she certainly didn't deserve what Colleen Ballinger did to her. Um, so I, I, I just think that this is continuing the sad fishing, it's continuing the grift, it's continuing the feel bad for me and let's just ignore that I literally sent my fans after a kid who had to move, had to move and had to move because the Colleen fandom knew where this child lived. Um, you know, and even if Adam was barely an adult, whatever, like I'm not really focused on the timeline. I'm focused on her literally orchestrating hate campaigns against people that were, um, no longer on her side or in her corner for whatever reason, whether it be an ex fan or her ex husband. The other part of this video that I thought was really interesting was she goes into this conversation about how, um, you know, she is going to send her kids to public school or private school or homeschool them, depending on what is best for each child. And if one child does better in public school, she'll send them to public school. If one or two kids do better homeschool, private school, y'all get the idea. Whatever is best for that child, they are going to go ahead and do what that child needs to be done. It's so funny to me because I constantly see these parents that are family vloggers sitting there saying, we are going to do whatever is in the best interest of our children, but they continue to put them onto social media for public consumption. And I just find that to be kind of like the Nikodiwa situation, just very hypocritical. Um, you're, you're willing to do what's best for your child when it comes to homeschool, private school, public school, but you won't keep them off social media to keep their childhood sacred and secure and private until they're old enough to give you the proper and inco informed consent that is required to participate in such activities. So Colleen Ballinger, like a lot of other, a lot of other people are, you know, hypocritical, constant victim. And I think that it's just kind of a joke at this point, but I will continue to cover her because I cover her in case any of y'all are new. I covered her long before this past summer when everything kind of hit the fan. I have always had a problem with her. I have always had a problem with her Miranda Sings content and I will continue to cover her because it is very clear to me that she is somebody who is going to make herself the victim and be a hypocrite and continue to use her children, which deserves coverage. Wait 
Flynn goes to school? I'm just trying to catch up. Um, when did this happen? So there's a lot of questions about this because I mentioned Flynn was going to school. Jamie said, you keep mentioning Flynn going to school, but I don't remember you ever talking about him attending for the first time. Did he start when you were on your break? I don't think he told us anything about it on um, the first day. His emotions, your emotions, his teachers, experience of fire, behavior changes, things he's learned, etc. We please talk about this. People have always asked what I would do um, if I ever had kids, would I put them in school, would I homeschool them? I went to public school, I went to private school, and I was homeschooled. I got kind of a version of all of them. I've always known that I wanted to just do whatever's best for my kids. So if one of my kids would excel the most being homeschooled, I will homeschool that child. If one of my kids would excel the most in public school, that's where my kids can go. And so that's what I plan to do with my children. But obviously, we're going to do the most research we possibly can as they enter into like full blown school and do what we think would be best for each child and then go from there. And if it doesn't work out, we find the next best thing and we just figure it out till we find the perfect environment for our kids to excel and learn and grow as much as possible. And so that's kind of what we're in the process of doing. Flynn starts kindergarten in the fall of this year. And so Flynn's not in like full on school every day. That's not, he's not doing that yet. But he is in a few different classes throughout the week that provide him with different experiences in different environments so we can see as his parents what works the best for him. And so now we kind of have an idea of what we're leaning most towards and we talk to him about each class. He never went to like a preschool every single day because Eric and I are very fortunate that we can work from home for the most part. And so um, we've always been able to be around him and have him be with us. And But we did want him to be in like school settings. So we've started to put him in more classes and things so that he can have that experience. And the first day that I ever dropped him off and left and came back, uh, was very emotional for me. Now the last part of this video, I really want to hear from everybody, obviously, but I really want to hear from y'all that are either military, retired military, military spouses, military family members, because Jordan Nelson has been cosplaying as somebody who is in the military. He likes to wear his fatigues and have his gun on his hip and just wear this tactical gear that is literally for nothing. He is not and was never in the military. Um, he is a police officer whom used excessive force and abused a black man who he was supposed to be taking into custody and he abused his power and um, in, in my opinion, he really exposed himself for exactly who he is in that moment. I've covered that in other videos. Please check my Brittany Dawn playlist in case y'all are interested. But Jordan has this tactical helmet that is evidently very heavy. Brittany went ahead and put it on her head and said how she was not cut out for this. And that is one thing I can say that I agree with her on. She was not cut out for that for cosplaying with her husband. I think that she was cut out to be an animal abusing idiot and she has shown that she is actually cut out for that role. <clears throat> I wasn't cut out for this life. It's very heavy. But I was. <laughs> A lot of people over on the Brittany Dawn subreddit were talking about stolen valor, and I've never really like dug into that topic, but based on what I understand surface level, is that applies to people who are making a profit off of acting as if they were in the military or received some kind of medal of honor. As always, correct me if I am wrong down below. What I want to say about this is what a slap in the face to people who have actually served in the military to have somebody like Jordan, a disgraced police officer who literally beat a black man that he was supposed to be taking into their custody to cosplay as a military person. Like, is this all just fun and games? Is this to make himself look tougher than he is? Is this to um, make people think that he is more important than he is? I am not sure, but that clip of her putting the helmet on her head, I'm definitely gonna use that in my thumbnail because she just looks so stupid. She looks so just like, oh, I'm, I'm the prim and proper wife. I can't, this is too heavy. I'm not cut out for this. Bernie Dawn, I have seen through you from day one. And a lot of us have. So take that little, oh, I'm not cut out for this. This is heavy, blah, blah, blah. And let's focus on what you actually are cut out for. And that is for abandoning and abusing animals. The last thing I want to touch on regarding Brittany Dawn is the fact that she put out a video talking about the kind of standards that she and Jordan are living by, the rules that they're living by in their Christian-based marriage. And she talks about divorce and how they won't even say the word divorce because it is not an option. 
to put out to your followers that divorce is so bad that you won't even say the word and you have people who are manipulated and possibly brainwashed by Christianity watching this video and thinking, wow, like divorce is so bad, I should really look at it as almost like a sin in their mind. I find this to be extremely, it, it's, it's, a, it's an abuse of your platform. Because to put a message like this out, you are telling people that no matter what happens in your marriage, divorce is not an option. Because she did not add any conditions or find text or anything along those lines. She said that it is simply not an option and they do not use that word. There is no shame in divorce. There is no shame in leaving your spouse or your partner for your own well-being, for your own safety, for your own... Um, maybe you just one day realize that this is just no longer for me and I've tried, you know, doing all of the things and it's just not for me. That should not be met with judgment and shame by people like Brittany Dawn, whom are fake Christian influencers. Um, th this should not be something that is frowned upon. This should be something that... You know, here's the thing. I thought that Christians accept everyone and they're so loving and accepting and all of the good things, but you're literally telling people that divorce is not an option. You have hundreds of thousands of eyes on your channel that is misusing your platform, period. And that's how I feel about it. So I really wanna know, how do y'all feel about all of this? As always, I'm very interested to see the comments <clears throat> and just see, you know, kind of, how do y'all feel? So either way, I think that's enough for today. If you liked the video, please leave a like in the comments. And if you'd like to see more from me in the future, please subscribe. I'll see you guys soon. Bye. Say goodbye. Say bye-bye.